Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reed, and I'm a naturopathic doctor. And this is a video in response to a question someone posted on one of my videos about whether I use or what my thoughts are about using artemisinin to treat quote unquote late stage Lyme. So the I think I know what that question means, but just to clarify in terms of a differentiation, uh, late stage Lyme, I mean, technically would be um, more in reference to uh, sort of a stereotypical Lyme disease where someone has had, you know, the bullseye rash, they've had, you know, fatigue, joint pain, um, and then that's progressed ultimately to um, more getting into like a migratory arthritis. They're starting to get sicker and sicker, maybe getting some neurological symptoms, maybe some Bell's palsy, things like that. And then it can progress even further into you know, encephalitis and um, and heart like carditis and things like that, like just a really serious brain and heart disease. So that would be a kind of um, uh, the, the more textbook definition of late stage Lyme disease. And in that case, um, I would definitely, I, I wouldn't be treating that patient. I would be sending them to the, say, go to the hospital. Uh, what are you doing in my office? And you need to be on, you know, IV antibiotics and, uh, you know, pulling out all the stops with pharmaceuticals uh, left, right, and center. So, um, however, I think what was meant by the question that was posted. And, and the person who posted the question, please let me know if you meant something different. But I think that the nature or the intention behind the question was, um, would I recommend artemisin? And for someone who was dealing with a uh, very like heavily developed Lyme uh, or persistent Borreliosis, kind of a, a persistence of this um, uh, Lyme disease causing bacteria in their system and they've become really quite sick and debilitated. Um, they're, they're not very functional. It's, it's kind of like very severe, uh, heavily life impacting um, uh, quote unquote chronic Lyme disease. So uh, hopefully that's what the question was. Um, if it's something different again, just let me know. Um, but um, in terms of artemisinin, um, where for those of you who don't know, Artemisinin is a component of the herb, herb wormwood, and it seems to be the the most or one of the most potent anti-infectious components of the wormwood herb. Um, it's used to treat uh, malaria. Um, it's also used to treat Babesia, which is one of the co-infections of Lyme that um, uh, can, can have chronic manifestations as well. And, and then some practitioners um, absolutely use wormwood or, or artemisinin or the synthetic form of artemisinin, which is called artesanate, which we can use intravenously um, and, and sometimes intramuscularly um, to treat these infections. Um, I don't use artemisinin myself a whole lot. Uh, we use artesanate in some patients, but I don't really use artemisinin a whole lot. Um, I do in, in some other patient uh, case types, but not really in um, not really in my chronic infection patients. Um, not for any particular reason, um, save that I found that the other types of herbs that I work with seem to work well. And so I haven't really found myself needing to reach for that artemisinin bottle per se. Um, with that being said, I know some practitioners do use it. Um, there's this protocol called the Zhang protocol, Z-H-A-N-G or Z-H-A-N-G for you non-Canadians out there. And <clears throat> It's a, it's a protocol that involves multiple herbs, but uh, wormwood is part of that protocol. And I'm trying to remember off the top of my head now, I don't think that it's artemisinin specifically, but I know that wormwood is one of the primary herbs that's part of that Zhang protocol. So it's, uh, it's certainly something that's used, and I, I think that it's a great herb. I think it's a great extract of that herb, and it does seem to be quite potent. So when dealing with, um, you know, late stage Lyme disease um, in the, in, um, in the uh, manner that I think the question was being asked. Um, I think that it's something, you know, of course, working with your clinician and seeing what he or she thinks um, as part of that protocol, but it, it's certainly a reasonable herb to think about. Um, I wouldn't personally, except in maybe rare circumstances, use just artemisinin to treat late stage Lyme. Um, I would definitely be working with other things and I wouldn't just be focusing on, or I wouldn't just be working with um, agents to help kill the infection. I certainly would be doing that, but I'd also be working with agents that help to modulate the immune system, promote tissue healing, kind of undo or uh, repair the damage that's been caused by the microbe. And that's, in my experience, <clears throat> incredibly, incredibly important. It's very rare in my experience that someone could be at, you know, sort of those more devastating or catastrophic, you know, late stages of chronic infection symptoms and <clears throat> um, just killing the microbes alone solves, cracks the case, gets them feeling, you know, bouncing out of bed in no time. Um, it's That's very rare. Um, and I know a lot of folks kind of 
wish that that wasn't the case, that they wish that, oh, they could just go on the antibiotics or go on the herbs or go on a combination of both, just kill, kill, kill the microbes, and then everything's going to bounce back to feeling better. The reality of it is that in the vast majority of cases, when someone's been sick for, you know, a number of months or a number of years, or in some cases, a few decades, there's been so much damage and dysfunction that's happened in the body that just killing off the microbes, yes, that's an important thing to do, but the damage has to be repaired. The analogy I like to use with my patients is that if a person's house is on fire and if that fire has been blazing and blazing for a while where it's it's really doing a number on that house, you finally put out the fire, the house doesn't magically go back to being perfectly functional again. It's going to have to be rebuilt. And, and really the analogy is more like as the firefighters are working on putting out the flames, let's start rebuilding the parts of the house that are no longer on fire. And that will you know, uh, it's not really the best analogy because they don't usually get contractors in there to start working on the repairs when the house is on fire. But um, that that's that's kind of the way that I approach things. And that seems to be what plays out the best in clinical practice. So I hope that that answered the question. If it didn't, let me know. If there's any other questions about this topic or anything else, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And I hope that this was helpful.